In today's video, we're going to be taking a full deep dive into our wintertime analogs. We have 2002, 2009, and 2015 into 2003, 2010, and 2016, respectively. Before we dive into things, be sure to check out Prestige Weather in the description and the pinned comment down below. We did just release our snowfall forecast over there and that is going to feature kind of the compared to normal snowfall forecasts that's been available for a little while here it is going to be on the channel very very soon so be sure to check that out today we also do consulting calls and other consulting services within there for only five dollars a month again in the pinned comment and description down below let's dive into things and first things first we're taking a look here at december so we're going to take a month by month look We'll take a look at the December, January through February outlook, which is going to give us the full three-month total winter outlook. And we're going to do both the temperatures and the precipitation today. Now, what's interesting is December of all of these years, we featured cold temperatures out west with warm temperatures in the east. And this is an awesome opportunity for us to talk about what a negative p &A pattern would look like. It looks exactly like this. Colder temperatures out west mean warmer temperatures in the east and that is exactly what we're seeing here according to the decembers of all of these years these years are awesome comparisons historically for what this upcoming winter looks to potentially be we can use a couple of different things in weather we can use history we can use forecasting models and we can use just teleconnections overall to try to project what the upcoming winter is going to look like. And I think history is one of those things that's underutilized in the industry today. Let's move into January and things flip all the way. So we see, by the way, you're going to notice the years change. That's because we have to use the starting year here. So December is obviously the year prior. January is going to be the new year. So this is the same winners, just different year, of course. Now we can see the opposite in this case to that negative PNA example. This is a very, very positive PNA to say the least. We see very warm temperatures out west here. So I'm gonna draw positive. And we see cooler temperatures that move into the east as a result. So this is a very, very important indicator that PNA and that stands for Pacific North American Oscillation. All it is is warm or cold in the west that's the simple version and simple explanation of what it is. We can see extremely cold temperatures, especially for the southeast Ohio Valley and deeper south here. But even the surrounding states are also very, very blue in this case. Let's take a look here at February overall and maybe even colder than that January example was. Uh, again, the heart of it over the southeast here. So take note of that and very warm temperatures along the western seaboard. Again, positive PNA and this is what helps that cold move into these areas. Very, very important projection uh, there. The PNA is just so important. I cannot stress that enough. I've talked about it all year long. I'm continuing to talk about it because it really is a driving factor in what weather we can expect moving forward. So definitely something to pay close attention to always. Let's just take a look at March real quickly and we can see some big differences here. So March isn't technically a winter month. It is the first month of spring, but we still have uh, wintry weather perhaps expected. Maybe not in these red areas as very warm temperatures tended to move in in a lot of these years. So perhaps an early start to spring, although we haven't on the channel officially started to talk about the springtime. It is, you know, getting towards that time of year where we will start to mention it a lot more. Now, the full December through February outlook for all of these years features overall colder in the southeast, warm along the west, again, positive PNA there. We do see some warmer temperatures, especially in the upper Midwest there, and then for the northeast. But the further south you go down there, the colder things get towards the Gulf Coast, which is important to note to say the least. Now, as we move into the precipitation outlook here here's first off for december and we saw a lot of storms moving through uh kind of the western seaboard now we see that the storm track would be perhaps something like this is is 
kind of what you could expect. It is interesting that in these particular El Ninos, the more recent ones, we didn't really see the amount of precipitation in the southwest that you would typically expect to see during an El Nino. Certainly something to watch for, something to pay attention to here. Um, and we're going to continue to track that developing situation just because there is some huge implications if that precipitation is in the northwest or in the southwest, obviously with more drought situations. Keep in mind that along the Gulf Coast and southeast, we do see a lot of storms moving through like this, perhaps some moving through more inland, perhaps more off the coast oftentimes. But that is the main storm track. Something in between those types of motions is really what we see a lot of here. Now, January, uh, what we end up seeing is a continuation of that higher amounts of precipitation in the northwest, a little bit less in the southwest again than what you typically see in an El Nino. And for some reason, the Januaries during these years featured more dry conditions here. Uh, along more of the eastern states and likely what's happening here is that trough was so deep that a lot of these storms were moving through like this not even making their way into these regions whatsoever that is kind of my analysis of that february though things open back up out west we saw things really get closed off here as you can see so we're really seeing a lot more dry conditions there in a lot of these februarys of course, this isn't going to be a perfect predictor of what to expect, but it is interesting to go month by month. We're going to put an X there because we really didn't see much in the way of precipitation. Uh, we did see a lot more here for the Gulf and, and East Coast here, to say the least, though. Uh, and then for March here, what we ended up seeing was a little bit of some dryness over the southwest and a lot more storms moving through, likely like this. Some even up the coast here that created some above average precipitation there for New England as well, but not a whole lot here in the more inland areas for the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, and even some of the interior eastern states is what I would call it for a lot of Pennsylvania, Virginia, West Virginia, Western North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky. We didn't see too much in the way of precipitation for those particular areas during those marches. Now the December through February outlook here overall Again, we saw quite a bit here in the Northwest, not as much as you'd expect for the Southwest, but we did see a lot of storms moving through that kind of Gulf to East Coast area. So that is what holds true oftentimes in El Ninos. Uh, although again, you would usually see a lot more in this pocket, but it's not there. It's just not there like it typically is in these three specific uh, scenarios, 2002, 2009, and 2015, we did not see that. But we did see the very typical and much expected nor'easter pattern still in these more southern and eastern regions. Very, very interesting stuff and certainly exciting to take a look at as we move towards the winter time. Speaking of moving towards the winter time, we do upload every single day. So be sure to subscribe for daily weather uploads just like this one. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.